Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back or welcome if you are new here. A little bit of a different setup today. I'm still in the process of getting my office situated and I absolutely hate this black chair, but Wes got a new desk chair and mine, I like loved the color of it. It was like a nice beige, like kind of aesthetic looking actually. And I hate a black office chair, but it's way more comfortable. Like I literally, the seat pad was worn out on the other chair, so this is good for now. Again, I just posted our home tour. I feel like our offices are just, it's like so conflicting. Like I feel like we've been putting them off, but we both spend so much time in them. We actually need to pay attention to them. We actually need to like spend time revamping them, but that's okay. But yeah, I figured I would give y'all something to look at in the background versus having a blank wall behind me. But I feel like as we're filming more and more, I'm gonna make it a priority to like actually create a backdrop so there's something interesting to look at versus just you know a blank wall but so we're approaching the end of November I'm, I'm a planner I've been thinking for a little while about like 2023 intentions goals that kind of thing and wanted to put together a little video of things that you can do ahead of the new year so you're not on January 1st panic mode what do I do where do we take this and you know retroactively freaking out also the first thing i will say don't even need to say this but like everybody does it they make their goals for the new year right goals yeah and they just fall off so i have actually gotten into a pretty good routine of making it more about intentions versus goals and things that i'm actually going to focus on and putting them in front of my face so that i have no choice but to look at them every single day you guys know i have my list in front of me of things to talk about so i don't forget first things first if you journal go through your journals from the past year i want to show you guys i have started spending more and more money on journals i used to spend so much money on planners and now that i don't use a physical planner i'm like i'd rather spend money i mean it's like 20 bucks but i was gonna show you guys this one that i just finished i have many many i write a lot every morning this was like a I think this is for elementary school kids. I got this from Target. I really like a spiral bound, but I'm so particular about journals. I don't know, I just like the texture of this one. So I had been using this a long time ago and found it and finished it. But my point in saying this is if you aren't journaling, do, highly recommend it. Like just brain dumping or just writing down things for gratitude. A good place to start, I always recommend is the five minute journal, just so you have prompts. But I've gotten so good at it that I write like five pages every morning and it's just so, what is it, cathartic to me like it feels so good I enjoy it every morning so invest in a quality journal like it doesn't even you don't even have to invest but find a journal that you enjoy writing and I find that that changes whether I want to do it or not but I have found that like a true notebook size journal is really what I like and these you get like Target um Amazon Walmart wherever and I'm really particular about like my pages and everything but my point of this was go through your journals because I write so much stuff down and then I think I heard on like a podcast or something they're like you're not doing yourself any favors if you don't go back and look at how far you've come what you're getting out of your journals how they've changed are there things that you have been harping on for literally a year and you have been ignoring and what can you do about those things so go through your journals that is my first and that can be an intention you have for the new year number two spend at least a day reflecting I would say go through the journals first. I feel like this is something I probably should like give prompts for, but it's really more so like, okay, I was just reading this morning in the Tim Ferriss Tools of Titans book. Such a good book. If you don't have it, read it. He was talking about a deloading phase. So it's basically like in fitness, if you're familiar with it, it's like, I don't say working down, but like it's literally loading backwards. He works it into his routine, like basically daily or weekly as much as he can, but obviously he works for himself. It's really like giving yourself space to think. Lauren Everett's of the Skinny Confidential. I feel like her and her her husband talked about this a lot is taking a week off and literally just disconnecting or a day off or a few days off and it's just taking time to actually think and just be and usually that's when your most creative ideas come so that's super important and it's just important to like take the time to yourself but really just like reflect on the year okay number three this is kind of off of that and off of the journals too is take inventory of crap that is either on your calendar 
or been on your to-do list or just something you know in the back of your mind that you've been putting off literally all year like what are the recurring themes month to month or for the whole year of things that you've just been putting off and you need to either decide to a do it and make a plan to do it b take it off your list like does it actually even need to be done or c like delegate it find someone else who can handle it your husband an assistant i got an assistant this year and it has been the best thing i have done because there's so many things that i am just i don't want to say not good at but like are the bane of my existence and are super easy minimal things and i'm like someone else can help me do this and learn from this so anyways just delegate if someone else can do it do it okay number four is purge your wardrobe i actually did this recently and i'm in the process of building a capsule wardrobe which i highly 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 recommend i'm doing a whole series on tiktok and i'm gonna do a youtube video about it too this is the biggest thing about the wardrobe right now, at least for me, is that I <laughs> kept all of my, I, I kept all of my work clothes because I figured I'd be going back into socks. And I am, but it's different. People wear jeans. People wear ripped jeans. People wear tennis shoes. And so I really need to get rid of the work stuff that I hated before and I just wore because it was easy. So I need to get rid of all that stuff. But like basically what I'm saying is evaluate what your everyday wear is now actually. Post COVID, what are you wearing? on a daily basis like are you even dressing up are you holding on to clothes that you don't need or should you invest in like i don't say elevated lounge but yeah again with the capsule collection like or should you invest in pieces that you like wearing around the house and you don't look like a slob kebab, or do you wanna wear hoodies every day? Just like be realistic and think about that and take inventory of the things that you're holding on to. And again, capsule wardrobe is coming. And speaking of home things, I love this background. Invest in your home. I personally find that my productivity is so much so, and again, like what I mentioned with our offices, I spend so much time here, like so much time in my office, and I've slowly been putting it together, but your home, if you work from home, is your place of zen. It should be zen. And vibes and if you're not at home I realize this so much so now that I spend so much time here but like you want to come home from work if you are going into the office you want to come home from work and feel chill you don't want to come home to a mess and keeping it tidy is a whole other thing but like invest in your space invest in making it what you want it to be what you want to come home to or also how you want to spend your entire day if you want a standing desk invest in that I probably should do that like make it a place that you feel good in because I don't want to say like your productivity but like you're happy the way you feel every single day if you wake up every day and like I have slowly been getting better about this but when we moved into our house and we had like no furniture every day I'd wake up and I know it's still driving Wes crazy it's like we don't have anything up on the walls yet because I need to paint some stuff and we need to buy some things but like when we had no furniture like every day I'd wake up and be like stressed about that I kept putting it off and putting it off because I had other things to do but I was like no this is like something that will make me feel so much better when it's done okay on to 2023 Okay, so this is kind of twofold, like I said in the beginning, about goals and intentions. I think I'm going to make a video about a vision board. You guys let me know if you want to see that, like how I make mine with all the tools and Pinterest and how I pull things and how I put it together. And I almost also thought about doing a template. We'll see, like in Canva or something, like a free version. But first thing is intentions. Like I think about, this goes more so along the lines, so like with the vision board, is what do you see yourself doing? This is a whole thing I could go into. It's like... A side note on this, Mimi with Superhuman, her meditation app, the writing meditations will help you so, so, so much. If not, you could probably find something on YouTube, like yearly intention setting, but also like what do you visualize yourself doing? Like your future self in one year. How do you see yourself living, thinking? What are you doing on a daily basis? Do you have a different job? Are you married? Do you have a partner? Have you bought a house? I know those are all tangible things, but like what are you feeling and thinking on a daily basis? Those are like the nitty gritty. And that kind of goes into the intention and the vision board like what do you see yourself doing write all of that stuff down again with the brain dump and then goals to me are more like tangible things like I hate encouraging people to do like I want to lose weight you know but it needs to be like if you're going to that you need to work backwards and how are you going to do that like how are you going to get there what are you going to do are you going to do 75 hard are you going to pick up a diet don't pick up a diet at the beginning of the year just realistic goals actually realistic goals write those down just start thinking about them and like i said work backwards break them down i don't want to get into a whole stack of books but all of these i'll list them all below i was going to say besides 
maybe this one would be super helpful the one i will definitely definitely recommend is atomic habits just like that is i feel like this is an immensely helpful book if you want to read something going into the new year but i have two greg McEwen books right now essentialism and effortless the one thing by gary keller of keller williams like real estate and then this i just got this it's really really good i like dove right into it i went a little crazy but i would say if you want to like hone in on your goals this is the best book yeah okay i hope this was helpful i just wanted to like highlight a few things just to get your thoughts going on the new year and like what you can do ahead of time if you're not panicking on january 1st i hope you guys enjoyed this let me know if you have any questions you guys let me know if you want to do a vision board but look out for the capsule wardrobe video it's coming i'm working on it i got derailed with mexico and like mexico it's now i'm like okay back to sweaters yeah that's coming hope you guys enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe follow me on instagram tiktok all of that fun stuff and I will see y'all in the next one.